Dear learners, I welcome all of you to NIS Studio. Uh, in this lesson, we will discuss about Indian society, tribal, rural and urban. In the last session, we will discuss about what is tribal society, the characteristics and also the challenges and issues faced by the tribal communities. Uh, now, we will discuss about what is rural society, the characteristics and also the issues and challenges and problems faced by the rural society. So when we talk about rural society, it means society that live in village and it depends on the natural environment. These societies have a low density population, intimate group relationship and have oral traditions. And they are rich in culture and tradition also. So from there on you might have uh, got the impression that the, when you talk about the, they are dependent on the natural environment, that means they are more dependent on the agriculture. It is not only source of income, but also way of life for villagers. Uh, the statistics point out that they around 70 percent of the total population, they are dependent on agriculture, whether uh, it is urban, whether it is uh, Punjab or it is Odisha or Bihar or West Bengal, you will find most of the population are dependent on agriculture for their day to day life. It is, it not only helps to have source of income, but also well, the, most of the cultures, lifestyle also depend on the agriculture. If, similarly, when we talk about Bihu in Assam, they are also related with the agriculture. Similarly, when we talk about Pongal in uh, different Pongal or Makar Sankranti, so that also related with the uh, agricultural system. So, in Indian uh, social life, when we talk about agriculture, it is not only uh, the uh, source where we, are, we earn the income, but it also way of life of villagers where the culture, lifestyle are all related with agriculture. Similarly, you might, you might have seen that the Swedes and uh, even the food pattern that is also related with the agricultural system. And if you look rural society, it is small in size, uh, people live in small geographical area with low density population like you might have seen in Delhi or Mumbai or other metro cities. Even in a particular, in a small geographical area, you will find lot or uh, huge population and they have a high density population. But in rural area, they are, um, it is very small in size. And uh, in case of rural areas, face to face relations is much more found among the members and they uh, usually meet with each other for festivals and also uh, in different rituals also. You might have seen that if any uh, marriage or any kind of function are celebrated in a particular village, in a particular family in the village, even the neighbors and even the whole village participate in that and they, uh, they lead a happy life because they have the dependence with each other. And even in, even in case of uh, death rituals, every um, family members from each uh, uh, in the village, they come to the um, other family uh, to make to console the family members and also participate in the death rituals. Uh, in case of rural, rural life, the role of lineage is also very important. The Kutumb is a concept is there. Suppose if any, uh, if any, in any family, the death uh, any person uh, got or passed away, even the neighbors, those who belong to the Kutumb, they also participate, they, they also uh, um, observe the death rituals for five to ten days as for the rituals of the family members. So therefore, in case of rural society, the role of lineage is also very much important unlike the urban areas. Similar joint family system is much more found in the uh, rural areas where what is joint family? A group of family who li live under one roof, eat food, cooked at one hearth, have joint property, participate in common worship and are linked to each other. Like suppose in case of um, uh, Holy and Diwali when you see at that point of time wherever whether uh, people uh, uh, living in the metro cities they, they come to their own uh, village during the festival so that each and every member of the family can be able to celebrate the uh, festival in a proper manner. They share the fellow feeling with each other. Uh, even a marriage happened in the rural areas you will find that those family members they come to each other even they share their, uh, their finances, they share their time with each other so that the marriage function is celebrated in a proper manner. So therefore, you find joint family is much more prevalent in the rural society in India. So suppose anyone will ask the uh, common difference between uh, rural society and urban society. So the first, part, the first thing comes to our mind that joint family is much more prevalent in the rural areas and 
nuclear family is much prevalent in the urban area. So, so that uh, that comes uh, in most of the mind. So therefore, joint family, uh, if we talk about joint family and rural society, that can be separated with each other. And uh, in case of rural society, people are much much more tradition oriented and uh, in performing the rituals. Like suppose uh, whether it is Holi or Diwali or any kind of marriage function celebrated, they they celebrated each rituals uh, in a proper manner. And uh, in case of rural society, group feeling and mutual cooperation is much more evident in the rural society. And uh, so therefore, we'll find if any kind of um, uh, any kind of issues or challenges come in the any any of the family members, people uh, people in the village they get together and they help that family members in a proper manner. Similarly, caste system is also much more prevalent in the rural society. Casters are ranked based on purity and pollution, religious practices and nature of occupation. In the rural society, it is uh, the economy is very much self-sufficient, but it is static economy, unlike uh, urban economy. The, uh, the rural economy grows very slowly in a steady manner because they are much more dependent on the agriculture and the agriculture is the sole source of income. So therefore, uh, if you come uh, see in rural society, it is the economy is self-sufficient and uh, but it is static. Um, but in uh, rural society, there are so many changes happen because of government, different government programs have happened in the rural society. Um, like common development program in 1952 was the major program in which uh, all round development of village communities have happened. And here the community participation was the main aim in the community de development program. Uh, similar during 1960s and 1970s, the Green Revolution uh, was introduced. And in that, agricultural productivity have increased due to new technology. New kind of technology, new kind of machine have been introduced in the during that period of time and that has really helped the multifold, uh, multifold uh, increase in agricultural productivity. And in that medium and large farmers mostly benefited as inputs were expensive and uh, if you will see uh, the, um, the areas in Rajasthan and Haryana, um, uh, states like Punjab and Rajasthan, they have become much more uh, developed than other states in, in terms of agriculture due to green revolution. Similarly, Panchadala system introduced in 1959 was also a game changer which has really uh, changed the socio-economic positions in the family. If you look, uh, if you go to the rural areas, you will find uh, the people have the uh, pakka houses um, and it is due to the various housing scheme introduced by the uh, government of India. And uh, like we have a PM housing scheme, due to PM housing schemes, many people got benefited and they have the pakka houses. Similarly. The schemes like uh, Manrega, the schemes like uh, land or, you know, development programs. So these have really helped in getting employment and also education, and these also help to rise above um, below poverty line. And as I told you, we have also many education programs like Sarvashikha Bijan, Right to Education. We have uh, schemes like Education of Girls scheme. So that have really helped in uh, development of economy, like Panchari system. Uh, had given reservation to several tribes, several caste, and as they have, as they are given various uh, opportunity to participate in the election process, so that has really also helped their communities to have their own voice and also have to, and also have their benefits from the government schemes and programs. So we can say the Panchayat system and different schemes and programs have really helped in uplifting the economy and soci soci cultural and social upliftment of the rural society. And globalization has also um, uh, influenced the rural economy to grow in a large scale like uh, uh, incorporation of agriculture into global market has also effect on the rural society. In some regions of Punjab and Haryana, the farmers have also entered into contracts with um, multinational companies such as PepsiCo to grow certain crops such as potatoes and tomatoes. And similarly, even uh, ICT in information communication technology has also helped a lot in uh, developing the rural economy because uh, thankful due to uh, various communication channels like mobile due to uh, in uh, computer revolution, 
even the people in the rural society they are also able to in have the information about the government schemes and programs aaj information is, is always a power so once they get to know about schemes and programs they are able to you should use it for their own benefit even the community radio programs have also really helped people to know about the various agricultural uh, um, schemes and programs how technology can be used to for the agricultural productivity and how the different seeds and seeds and plants can be used for the um, development of agric agriculture and economy so we can say uh, real information communication technology has also helped a lot in the rural society let us discuss what is urban society and uh, uh, what urban society means and what the characteristics of urban society and what are the problems and issues found in the urban society what is urban society it includes towns cities metros with specific ways of life and uh, jo, um, urban areas are the areas having higher density population engaging mostly in occupation than agriculture having distinctly different ecology and culture if we compare between rural area and urban area I, uh, we told i told you that in rural area we have a lower density population even a uh, larger population larger area uh, there are less population but in case of urban area you will find even a smaller geographical area you will find huge population like you might have seen the flat culture in uh, mumbai delhi or other metro metropolitan cities even in a, even in one kilometer area you'll find around 3000 to 5000 population they have their own shelter and if you look at the characteristics of urban society um, they have higher density population as i told you they have the cultural heterogeneity like if you go to any uh, society in the urban area in delhi or um, we da will find people from different parts of the country like they are from odisha or west bengal bihar or tamil nadu kerala so you'll find both south indian culture west east indian culture west indian culture and so you'll find lot of uh, the dress pattern is also very different from each other and uh, similarly there are also man made environment the environment is not natural as it is found in the rural areas even the forests forests are created in the area and and uh, even there are also if you'll find any fountains are there the fountains are fountains are also created by the human beings but in case of urban society you find higher mobility because um, the kind of employment avenues provided the kind of education opportunities provided in the urban societies so therefore people have higher mobility compared to the rural areas and unlike rural areas uh, the urban society is much more class oriented you will go to if you go to the rural areas you find caste is the major characteristics and even they are uh, even the caste men have their uh, different uh, habitations suppose if you go to brahmin they are uh, they are staying in a particular area and um, those who are sudras they are living outskirt of the village so but in case of urban society even um, you don't know if your next neighbor is also from different caste or he or she may be from other caste so caste it is mostly class oriented Mm, and formal social control is much more uh, prevalent in the urban society where the rules and regulation framed by the state uh, has to be obeyed by the members of society even uh, even for performing certain rituals like marriage or certain um, family programs you have to take permission for for a particular time period um and um, market and monetary economy is the much more uh, prevalent in the urban society like if you go to rural society better exchange is still prevalent in the rural society where uh, people exchange their own com commodities to have other commodities in their hand but in case of urban society it is much more market and monetary co economy but in case of urban society you find the better civic facilities are there you have uh, water in time you have medical uh, facilities in your um in in few kilometers in even in uh, 100 meters area and if have uh, other facilities like the uh, rural society so metro civic facilities is also another major characteristics found in the urban society but you know urbanization has a deeper effect on the family and kin system like uh, we have small family norm relations with the distinct distance kin are also reducing because you know uh, you have to um, because your uh, in um, because you have a limited geographical area given to you suppose we are living in the flat cultures so we have a small flat so we cannot have 
10 to 15 members in a, in a small flat. So therefore, small family norm has become a uh, has become a, a norm for the uh, every family and can see. And similarly, uh, because people are busy in their own professional life and their job, so they are not able to meet even their distant kins. Uh, and uh, so that is also one major uh, effect of urbanization is found among the family and kin system. And if you look about the uh, status of women, that has also urbanization has a major effect on the status of women. Like now, if you if compare fire two decades back and now, you will find more women have been workforce. Even the women are also joining various uh, night jobs, like and uh, and their uh, women are also decision making because you have the um, when women have the money in their hands, so they are able to take proper decision of the family members. So, therefore, uh, women are much more in the decision making power. And if you find now, even a lot of companies they promote the women uh, women in their uh, in their job and also they give weightage to the women in the higher decision making uh, uh, jobs also. The different companies we will find lot of women have come to the major decision like uh, even the government sector also will find lot many uh, women CEOs are also they are they are running the entire office. So, so if we we'll compare uh, two decades back and now we will find uh, there are much more uh, women in the field and now gender equality uh, if you look at the sustainable development goals, gender equality is a major goal, major component in the sustainable development goal. And it emphasizes in the status of women. So now uh, women are educated, now women are much more, but we have to give much more importance to the women, whether uh, you are in the in your family or in your society or in your workplace, you must give respect and uh, uh, respect to your women and also you also give the adequate scope for to uh, adequate scope in the decision making, adequate scope in the um, in the different capacities. So, if we we'll talk about type um, uh, uh, type of cities, we have uh, metro there that have, that has around 10 lakh plus population. Then uh, class one cities are called that is one lakh plus population. Class two town those were 50,000 plus uh, concept, and then so there are different classifications. Uh, now we will discuss about what are different concept to urban society. Like we have, as you know, uh, urban society. They migrate due to migration because people migrate from their own areas to the uh, cities. So therefore, we have much more uh, occupation. So uh, post-factor migration is also another important. What is post-factor migration? A situation in which poverty in village poses one to urban areas in search of employment. And what is pool factor situation, situation in which amenities and opportunities available in urban areas attract to pools the rural people to the towns. Because the town uh, urban, urban areas have uh, better amenities like better education system, better medical system and also there is a lot of job prospect. Therefore, people uh, try to migrate from their own areas to the urban areas so that they can have their livelihood. So, if we we'll talk about uh, the two decades back and now we will find there is lot of changes happened in the rural areas and urban areas. The um, different parts of the rural areas now uh, if you go to village you will find um, there are less population if you we'll compare two decades back and now because in the rural areas they do not have adequate uh, education system, adequate employment, adequate medical facilities. So, therefore, they prefer to come to the urban area so that their child get education, their families also get employment and also medical care. So therefore, so you may search out particular village, you may go to the village and you may ask the um, elder members in the village that what, what was the uh, demography, what is the economic status two decades back. So they will be able to tell you how the changes have happened between deep in two decades of time, how the uh, people prefer, why the people prefer to go to the urban areas in different time. Even in case of urban areas, you will find uh, no doubt that we have good amenities, but you will find lot of issues and challenges also faced by the urban areas. There are also issues of having a uh, having what uh, congestion because you know if you talk about metro cities most of the time people travel due to heavy traffic because most uh, because urban areas have the huge population so the 
they face the issues of traffic in the right. And uh, second thing you will find a lot of uh, those who are living in the slums, they really face the issues of water and water and electricity because they don't get adequate water for their livelihood or for their day to day life. So therefore, water is also majorly, majorly found in the urban uh, and even the situation of crime is also um, much more found in the urban areas. No doubt there are formal uh, uh, law and regulator, law and regulation mechanism like their police, they have the court, they have the traffic system, but still um, the, the kind of crime is much more found in the urban areas. And the fair feeling is also very much uh, less in case of urban society. Even uh, even in a particular flat, you will find in particular society, even the persons living in the um, is person living in the is neighbor, but he is not he or she is not able to figure out who or so. Therefore, the kind of criminal uh, the crime is much more found in the urban areas in than compared to the rural areas. Uh, but urban areas have given lot of opportunities to the people also even due to the flood uh, culture even the person those who are coming to rural areas and they living in the storms they are able to get the adequate employment because those who are living in the, um, uh, those who have the higher income they are, so they are employing these persons uh, in, in their day to day life. So therefore, uh, urbanization has really, really given a lot of opportunities to the uh, to the population, to the people to have more uh, income, more education and more medical care. So dear learners, in this session we have discussed about uh, what is rural society, in that we have discussed about what is rural society, the uh, characteristics of rural society, we also discussed about the issues and challenges faced by the rural society and also discussed about what are the issues and challenges and problems faced by these tribal uh, rural and urban societies. So thank you very much. If you have any kind of doubt, please write to us at aosoci at the rate nis.ac.in. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.